Good evening, one and all. At the moment, all I can see is queens and empresses. Welcome, welcome to the one-to-one -one BAME Zoom Business Action Momentum Enterprise. The star of the show today is Deanne Heron. And we That's are good here. Good evening, Nettie, and good evening good. to everyone. Well done. We are gathered to hear her all about her momentous book, The Mandari Chronicles. And it is a momentous book. I would like to start by introducing, reading the back cover about the author. And then I'm going to allow Diane to emphasize on that about the author. Diane Heron was born in Jamaica and moved to Manchester, England in 1967, where she still lives. She is the author of the Pardna Money Stories, two volumes of short humorous stories about her Jamaica culture based around the interactions of four generations of an extended Jamaican family in Britain. In addition to Pardner Money Stories, Diane has written two volumes of poetry entitled Contemplation. She is currently working on the third volume of both series. Diane reads her poetry and stories at local events and on local radio and presents African and Caribbean news and Black History Month programs. She organizes local health and well being events and facilitates workshops for aspiring writers. As well as being an author and presenter, Diane is also a qualified counselor, trainer, and foster carer. Diane, welcome to the table. We are prepared for your banquet. Please elaborate on all your fares for us. A very good evening, Jeanette, and thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm listening and I'm thinking, who's that? Is that somebody else they're talking about? That's not, that's not me, is that? But oh, yeah, it's thank you. you. And I just want to wish everybody a very warm welcome. First of all, Carol, thank you so much for helping me to get a grip on technology. And I apologize to everybody because I'm not able to do the, um, I forget what you call it, the other way around. Um, so, you know, I hope you can still see and hear me clearly. So first of all, I want to say thank you for BAME for arranging this. Thank you, Jeanette and Carol. And thank you, ladies. We've only got ladies so far who have joined us. A very warm welcome. And I hope you're going to enjoy being with us for the next hour or so. And I know there are a few other people who are supposed to be joining. So hopefully they'll come along, you know. I'm sure. Thank you very much, Deanne. I'm sure we are waiting and anticipating. I'm sure those that are going to come on board will pick up from this elaboration of the book and all your stories within. Okay. Now, I have the book and it took me a month to get through. <laughs> it was a joyous month and my mind exploded truly exploded with the elaboration of imagination that you've got to me this book was the bible it was star trek it was black <laughs> panther it was all kinds of imaginary things but what really stood out for me throughout it was the ethos of go and do your thing. This is a book for warriors, soldiers, go-getters, entrepreneurs, people who have lost themselves and want to be found, people who are looking and searching something within themselves that they do not know is there. This is a book that brings out your core skills. It helps you to search your mind, your imagination, your core strengths. This book has got it all. And the reason why I love it, Diane, is because 
throughout it, I see biblical characters like Moses, like Esther, like Sarah, like Ruth, like David. I see all of those going through and the strength of character and the descriptive manner that you've brought them out is absolutely superb. So on that intro, my dear, Empress, take it away with wherever you want to read from because I am already enthrilled. Give us okay. your best. Again, thank you very much, um, you know, for your very kind words. And I've had so many amazing reviews from people who've read the book. And each time it just takes me completely by surprise because um, it's just really weird. I've written for a long time. I've always loved science fiction, but I've never written science fiction. I, I write short, humorous stories and I have my stories here. Pardon Money Stories. I've had two volumes. That's volume one of Pardon Money Stories, which are short, humorous stories um, about my Jamaican culture written in Jamaican Patois and standard English. And I've also had two volumes of poetry published called Contemplation, that's volume one. So for me to then write a science fiction novel, The Mandari Chronicles, that was just completely going off somewhere. But that came about because you, I think you all remember 10, 15 years ago when we had all these films about dwarves and elves and, you know, all these things. And it got my overactive brain thinking. And I started thinking, where did people get these ideas? Well, we're just humans. OK, we're different colours, whatever, whatever, but we're humans. Where did I get these ideas about elves and dwarves from? And then I started having these weird dreams. Almost every night I had a weird dream and the dreams were so vivid. When I actually woke up, it's like I was thinking, have I woken up? I'm, I'm, was that the dream? Was that real? And I was taken back in time and I was told that it wasn't just humans who were on earth originally. There were three races, humans, dwarves and elves. We didn't speak, we didn't have a spoken language because we use the full capacity of our brain. And even scientists today are saying that we only use a fraction of our brain. Most of our brain has been shut off and they don't know why. But we use the full capacity of our brains then because we were telepath. We didn't need to speak. We could transport ourselves to places just like birds can fly. I would just think, right, I need to go wherever to do my shopping and I'd be there. And then people started getting jealous of each other and which led to the race wars. And then we have the flood where a group of people were taken off the planet, taken to another planet called Mandar. And all those people thought everybody on the earth had been destroyed. But again, I mentioned the prophet, it was, it was Noah in the Bible, but I call him No. And he had this ship with these people and people on earth started you know, to, to live again. But it showed the story, it tells the story of how these people developed on this planet, they were called the chosen, how they developed compared to the people on earth. And then one of them accidentally ends up back on earth, Camille. He falls in love with this strange woman and the story takes off from there. And I'm going to just read what it says on the back cover, if that's all right, Jeanette, just to yeah. again, take a little bit further into the story. So, Lexis Carmichael is the main female character. So there's Lexis and there's Camille Hakaru. That's while they're on Earth. But when they are rescued and they go back to Mandar, that's when the story really starts. Okay. So Lexis Carmichael has always known she was different and that she just didn't belong. But nothing on Earth could have prepared her for how she would unravel the real truth of not only who she is, but of that of mankind. Her life on earth takes a dramatic turn when Camille Hakaru suddenly lands unannounced in her garden one winter's night, literally from another world. Having taken this fan sorry, fascinatingly beautiful man into her home, the two form an unbreakable cosmic bond, 
greater than any mere mortal could ever experience. Through that love, Lexis discovers her true origins, her real powers, and a new dimension to the history of man, all documented in the Mandari Chronicles. The Chronicles document the origin of mankind from the original races of Earth, once known as Terra, and these races were the Elims, or the Elves, then there was the Houses, which were the Dwarves, and the Medeans, which were the humans, and their intergalactic sojourn to planet Mandar. Thousands of years later, the races are now divided across two planets, Mandar and Kron. And again, they are at war. It is at this juncture in time that Lexis and Camille must, through their love, fulfill their purpose as foretold in the Chronicles to restore peace and realign the races on their trajectory to greatness. <coughs> through all the heartache, loss and shock discoveries, will they fulfill the prophecies of the Mandari Chronicles, restore alignment to purpose, reveal the hidden truths and witness love and freedom prevail? Now there's the question. So that's a little bit about the Mandari Chronicles. That is amazing. Now I need to ask you something, Diane, because I think everyone on here, apart from you, are born with one brain. How <laughs> many have you got? How many because brains? How many brains have you got? Seriously? Hmm, interesting. I've got, I don't know, I think I'm a mix of different characters because mm. I know I have a dozen. You're not one, you are definitely not one entity. <laughs> Nobody with one entity can unify the Bible and science fiction and all people. <laughs> I encourage you to get this book. But at the same time, you need to be able to divorce yourself from real life because you're going to go crazy with it. You're not going to eat. You're not going to drink. You're not going to wash. This book is going to take you to a place you've never been before in your life. But Do Diane, <laughs> Jamaican people, we can be very suspicious. Jamaicans, Jamaicans are a unique race. I mean, I yeah. know I'm Jamaican, so maybe I'm being biased. But again, you know, where else you see a people, they develop a complete language of their own, the patwa. You know, and they think in such a way out of the box. If you think of sport, every single thing on this planet, you know, they, they, they go and race in, in you know, the, 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 I forget what it was called now, um, where they, they go and race on the ice, you know, black people racing on ice. Come on, you know, and it's like, but we, we're told that we're descended from warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, they dumped our ancestors on Jamaica because they were the slaves yes. that couldn't control. Jamaica was the last country that they were able to bring under control because there was Nanny of the Maroons and her brother Koju, and they would not allow any of the slave masters to empower them. So they dumped the strong. So we are descended from yes. an amazing group of people. That's and this right. is why we've got this attitude, you know, if a Jamaican is in the room, you'll know about it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. And this, this, this is where I'm going along on this tangent here, because we're very suspicious of other peoples. Uh, and that's, I think that's why in the Jamaican culture, we've got so much um, variation of sayings. You know, we, we, our sayings are very, very colourful, as our food is very, very colourful. But then we're stemming from African roots. We're stemming from regality. You know, we are all kings, princes, princesses, and empresses. This is what we are as a people. And no matter how far we go, if someone has got a drop of black in them, but they look completely white, somehow they're still saying that they're black. So there's something inside, a seed that's inside all of us mm -hmm. that says, we are a dominant race. And mm. this is what came out in, in, in your book, you know, the dominance of the race. 
you know, and, well, and, and refinding themselves. Jamaicans in the book, but yeah. as you know, the Jamaican um, motto says, "Out of many, one people." One. So, and this is the thing when we say Jamaicans, if you came from, come from another island, don't worry about it because you're part of us. You know, right. Jamaicans embrace everybody. You know, the Irish is an Irish town in Jamaica. You know, you go to Jamaica, it doesn't matter what island you're from or where you're from, you start to speak Patwa. Yeah, man, you're one of us. Come. You know, we don't care what color you are, where you come from. If you accept us, we accept you. Out That's of cool. many, one. People. Jamaicans that, love everybody. As long as you true. treat them with respect, they will do the mm -hmm. same. That is very true. And and I think it's a shame that um people stigmatize Jamaicans all the time. But yet if people go to Jamaica on a holiday, they say we are the warmest people, the most accepting of people, and we embrace you. And if they just gave us time to tell our stories, then they will feel the passion and the love of the true Jamaican race. And this is why your, your writing, your series of partner stories, I can see why this is something that you want to, want to um, pass on to generations that don't know that background. Carol Nelson here as well is a woman of substance that wants to um, reintroduce that culture, those stories, and not let them be watered down and lost over a period the of children. time. Carol has written a children's book, and yes. I think now that's where we need to concentrate, educating the children. And as I said, yes. this is why I write my partner money stories, because when I read my stories now to my little grandsons, one of them, one's nine, the other one's 13, and they just sit there open mouths like, whoa, man, is that what you did when you were a little girl? I said, yeah. We all used to come and meet at somebody's house. Somebody would bring the chicken. Somebody would bring the rice and peas. You know, and we had a laugh. And as I said in one of my poems, it's like black people live double lives. We took off our coats and took off the drabness at the door. And we started laughing and became ourselves again. Once we get, you know, the music and everything. And that's part of our culture, but it's not just about Jamaican cult culture. There are lots of different Caribbean islands, the African countries, and this is why I do writing workshops with young people. I go into schools and I talk to the people and tell them about black history, but I've always said there's no such thing as black history. History has no color. History Thank doesn't you. old properly so that we don't marginalize one race and elevate another. I go into old people's homes and I do writing workshops, I do storytelling workshops with They love to keep everything, to, to, you know, they don't want to tell anybody anything, everything is a secret. And I say to them, you know, okay, so you came here after the war. Your dad fought in the Second World War, he was in the Air Force. And so have you ever talked, do your children know that? Do your grandchildren, oh no, no, there's no need for know that. And I said, yes, they do. I said, this is why you have elders, they're living on their own in one city, and then you have grandchildren, parents are working, and those children are on their own, and they're on their phones, and they're on whatever, whatever. And I say to the children, this is what I give them as homework. When you go home, ring grandma or granddad, ring great auntie, and arrange to go and see them, and let them tell you. What was it like when you came here, grandma? What, was, what work did you do? What was your life like? What was it like when you were my age in the country you came from? And get them to tell you. And I tell the elders the same thing. When was the last time you saw your grandchildren or you sat down with them? Invite them round and tell them. What did you eat in your country? What was life like? And this is how we can raise the self-worth of our children. And I feel if white children unfortunately the damage is done for a lot of white adults and i apologize to anybody i don't mean to offend anybody but if we teach children history correctly and white children knew what our black elders did to rebuild this country to make life okay for the way they live now they would have more respect people of color 
and it's not just African Caribbean, it's also Asian, you know, Pakistani, yeah. Indians, you know, what they did as well. But all that is just pushed to one side, unfortunately. I, 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 think, you've, I, I think you've got a point there. And um, I actually have done workshops on Black History Month. And I think that is just um, minuscule to have Black History Month. Mm. And it's just not wide enough or big enough to have Black... It shouldn't be Black History Month. No, it history, should be part of as the you're year. Saying, history, as you're saying, should be part of the curriculum for every single race. And especially if you've done something for country. You've got the Gurkhas, you've got the Sikh army, you've got the Asian, Asian uh, minority in army, you've got the black army, you've got the unification of people of color that have served, yet the mention of them is minuscule. And that is where things are going wrong. When the stories come up on Remembrance Day, etc., and the people go, come out in droves to listen and to hear, and the, the red poppy is going around, there's so much people that are interested. The bunting comes out home schools and everything celebrate they have the the, the minute silence etc and it is remembered and we are told never forget mm. but what is portrayed is predominantly the white race and what they did for the white country for the mother country and that we must never forget hello we mm. are being forgotten so mm. we can't keep standing back and say why don't they remember us when we have that platform of the minuscule Black History Month in October, we have to raise our game with our young people and so on and so on. If we've only got that small amount of time, if you knew that you only had a month to make a drastic change that was going to save your life, mm -hmm. the month before, the year before, you'd be in preparation for that minuscule month to make sure that what you delivered was going to be so forceful that everybody was going to stand up and hear what you had to say. Hmm. Now, the Black Lives Matter that has just come into fruition once again, but is being heard because there was the, that dynamic episode of George Floyd so visual to the world that is why that episode, although there's been many men, women, and children that have gone the same way before, but because it wasn't so visual for an eight minute length of time, it wasn't programmed into everyone's mind. Therefore, we have now got a new platform to work on. So, Deanne, with your workshops, have you thought of a more dynamic direction where you can project your message across in, is it Milton Keynes, Manchester? Manchester. And to the wider, to the wider environment? Have you, got, I, have I, you I delegated? Do, I things. And I, I stress to people all the time, just because, you know, October is Black History Month, it doesn't mean that we should only celebrate who we are in October. We, Hello. we've got the whole of the year. And this is why I tell the elders, start by sharing your stories with your children and grandchildren. When you are gone, those stories will go with you. And I say to the children, go and talk to your grandma and your granddad and find out what they did to rebuild this country. You know, and when I go into schools and when I tell them about the presence of black soldiers in the First and the Second World War who were put at the front line and killed <coughs> us, and I mentioned the 139 Jamaica squadron, there were a squadron of Air Force pilots. I mean, the teachers, go, what? I've never heard of that. the 139 Jamaica squadron. I said, yes, very few people know. And I tell them, they actually, you know, the British actually went to the Caribbean and said, your country needs you. It is your duty to come and serve your country. But unfortunately, when the Empire Windrush landed in, arrived at Tilbury Docks in 1948, there were people protesting, telling them to go back to their country, not realizing that these people had come to work in the hospitals. We drove the trains, we drove buses, we did all sorts of things. And when you speak to these elders, 
there were qualified teachers, professionals. But unfortunately, when they came here, they couldn't get those jobs. They ended up in factories, but they still did what they had to do for the mother country. But it's for us, you know, to make a difference. Number one, start with your own children. Yeah. Because I have started with my girls and I've told them, you know, you are, you know, the, the, you are entitled to go anywhere you want to go. You can go to university. You can have a professional job. Don't let anybody close the door in your face. And I'm doing that with my grandsons now. And I'm telling them you are as good as anybody else. Your color doesn't stop you from doing anything. You know, if somebody is racist towards you, it's not your problem. Don't get angry. They have the problem. Just walk away. Yeah. And if a door is closed in your face, don't give up and stop. Go another way. There's more than one way to climb up a hill. You can't go straight up, you go around. And you try and try. Like Barack Obama said, yes, we can. Don't give up. But it's for us to tell our children that. So we start with our children, which will give them self-worth and make them proud enough to know that they're as good as anybody else out there. And so on your, on, you have a radio station as well? Or hmm? do you, 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 you do things over the radio as well, don't you? Yes, I, I used to, for, well, for years. I've done yeah. an African-Caribbean yeah. news program with my music. I play all my nice tunes in between and, you know, shake my head and dance in the studio. Oh, uh, but I'm with so Radio so Diamond at the moment, which is a local <laughs> radio station. But I haven't been doing my show for some time. Because of COVID-19, we had to close the station. Yeah. But we're hoping we're supposed to be organizing a Zoom meeting soon so that we can decide. Although because, again, things have changed in Manchester um, over this weekend, we're saying now that we can't meet up now. Not even families can meet up. That's right. But we yes. were going to start going into the studio again. But we may have to look at that. But yes, I do African Caribbean news program on the radio. I organize local events. I organized a huge event at the West Indian Center last year, that, uh, October, okay. a health and well-being Good. event, yeah. where people came, they had their stores, they were selling healthy food. And you know, we had a couple from Gambia who came. Wonderful. They did a food demonstration and talked about healthy eating and relationships. You know, and lots of other you know local people. So I, I try well, and do my little bit, in, and I'm I'm a foster carer. I've been a foster carer for twenty. You just you just jumped into what I wanted to to bring up because next. I don't believe in just talking yeah. the talk. It's all right. We that's can all right. talk, but you well, have that's to great. Walk the walk. That's great, Deanne, because the fact that you've got all of these this this wealth of of, of background knowledge but not only within your head, you're actually expressing it in your writings, in the partner money stories, mm -hmm. but you're also fostering children. So you are, you are bridging that gap. Yes. With the foster children that you have, you are leaving that legacy with them, for them to have with their children and so on and so forth. Exactly. You upbringing with them, you are instilling that continuous seed that is a valuable source for their future and the future of their children so that we can still be remembered for what and who we are. Because now, I would like... I've done training. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. Jeanette. No, but in the past, on. I've done training with my fostering agency because they were placing a lot of African-Caribbean uh, Asian children, African children with white oh, carers who were trying yeah. to, them. but they would often give them a number, give Deanna a ring and ask her what to do with the hair, what you do with the skin. And then I said to them, why don't you let me come in and do some training? And you know, yeah, they, yeah, they jumped at the idea. So for a couple of years, I went into my fostering agency and I took in hair products, skin products. I took in books, lots of different black books for children of all ages. And I talked about hair, skin care, the importance of culture, cooking the, the food for the children and not just giving it to them, but for the whole family. And I said to them, you know, make Google your best friend. If you have a child, you know, from Namibia, and you've never even heard of the country, Google Namibia. Find out what they eat, what their culture is, and make sure that little child feels proud of who they are. You know, even if you're not a Muslim or you're not a Christian, still, you know, make that child feel that they're worthy. So right. know, this, this is what That's I That's wonderful. That's wonderful, Deanne, because the thing with children, they're always thirsty 
and curious. And if you can hold their attention long enough, they will soak up whatever it is you wish to teach them. Mm -hmm. And if we as a multicultural society cannot start the teachings with our children properly with every kind of culture, then we are doing things wrong because mm -hmm. everything has to start with the children. I don't understand why children's education is so um, black and white when we are a people of multicultural diversity. We really need to engage that stronger and more precise because when we are at this age, our children are growing ready to look after us when we cannot look after ourselves fully. So if they do not know our cultural upbringing, they would not know how to nurture and look after us in the ways that we are accustomed. Now we have with us Marcia Reed. And Deanna, I don't know if you know that Marcia Reed does the, the, the Elders Awards with BAME. Marcia, would you Hello. like to... Hi, Marcia. Like, nice to see you. Would you like to um, just tell us a little bit about the Elders Award and why you think it's so important? And maybe something with Deanne could be brought on board for the next one because she has so much partner money stories and you're always looking for those kind of things to be injected within that award ceremony. Marcia. Hi, hi, Janetti. Yes, um, yes. I'm sitting here intrigued and and hearing hearing the the, the importance of of our elders sharing their story, and the 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 elders award actually came about simply because my first project was about meeting with elders and getting them to 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 share their stories so that we could create a learning a learning tool for for youngsters um about uh how things used to be what what leave some of that legacy so that it's not lost when 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 our, our elders uh, pass on and what i found whilst doing that uh, Elders, as, as you say, you know, they, they, they struggle with sharing. That is a long time something you don't need to know that. Forget that, forget that. And as I went, I, I met with various elders at residential homes, um, various setting. What, what, what I found, I had to develop this trust because they wouldn't willingly share anything. They wouldn't, you know, as much as I'd say, um, the, I think they don't see it as having a story. It's it's not a story. It's nothing. It's just what it's used to happen, business. and that is long time. Yeah. So, so um, we want know that for, and and it's it's almost the expectation that they know that they think that we know what how things are. I, I remember meeting um, a group, and I was doing a project in uh, natural remedies. What did some of the fruit and veg and, and fruit and natural herbs and remedies, what they used to use it for and how it worked then and how we could put it in now. And some of the things they were coming up with, yeah, well, Marcia, all you do, you just think things like busy and uh, all the different herbs, I can't remember some yeah. of them now. But, you know, um, one of the things I remember saying to this lady, all right, busy, what are you using for? And it was like, the, um, um, upset stomach, can it? And it was like, all right, so what do you do with it? And she said something about, you quill it. And I go, quill? What does that mean? <laughs> and, and it was almost like, you don't know. And I'm thinking, no, this is why I'm doing this. Because if I don't know, my grandchildren won't know. And okay. this is why we want you to share the stories. And so, you know, so that is where now I sort of, um, started to get their trust and while speaking to them I was, I was finding out that so many 
were doing so much for the community uh, and, and helping in, at, a, at a time where some might say, you're at an age, you should be just taking it easy. They were still actively getting yeah. involved with, with um, helping out those less able or less, less active than themselves. And, uh, and I thought, let me use the Elders Award to, to try to develop more trust within them. So I thought, okay, let's park the capturing the stories and let's uh, let's recognize what they're doing selflessly so i've been running for the past seven years this year would have been my my seventh my eighth year but i've had to put it on hold because of covid uh, mm -hmm. but we've been running where we've had the the local community who would nominate someone over the age of 65 who were selflessly helping others in the community and uh, and and recognizing and uh, just giving them the public recognition which many again struggle to accept uh, that they're doing anything of worth and whilst they are nominated i find i'm having to have this difficult conversation with them to say look we just want to say thank you well i'm not doing nothing it's no big deal it's no they just don't get it and i'm saying look the fact that you don't need to do this you're not paid for what you're doing and what you are doing you're making a difference to the life of others we just want to say a public thank you so mm. every november i have this award ceremony where again like i said they're nominated from members of the public we then um everyone who's nominated get an, get a certificate and they get the public recognition and then we narrow down the the short list to a winner of each category and they get an award so it's like a dinner um, um awards or entertainment and it's almost like a vip evening for our elders to say thank you and what it also does it's about those elders who feel because i'm i'm, I'm over the age of 65 i they see themselves as old um, I can't do anything. It's about showing those elders that not because you reach an age, it means that you can't, you, you, you still, you still can't be active. You still can't do something. And um, one year, Jeanette, I don't know, I don't think, I think it was the year before that um, you guys came. There was a lady that was, she, she was, a, she was a hundred years old when her daughter nominated her. Wow. And at the time I was thinking, oh, bless her. She's a hundred. And I was so worried. I wonder whether she'll be strong enough to come to the Elders mm. Award and whether she'll be all right. And when I went to, to meet her, her daughter, it was all meant to be a surprise. Went to meet her daughter and she says, well, you know, mom still does um, her shopping. Um, her eyes are failing, but she used her iPad to read her Bible. And, and every Friday she go and she swim, um, how much you know, like five laps around, around the swimming pool. And, and when I heard that, I said, this is the, this is the 100 year old that I'm worried about. They're going, not going to be strong enough to come to the Elders Award. She's swimming five laps every Friday. I can't even do one. And, and it's like when she, when she came and um, I remember saying to my team, I don't care which category, but this woman is winning an award. Because Marcia, you can't do that. It's, it's not fair. I said, no, this is going to be the oldest woman in the room that's probably doing more than some of our young people and I will find a category. Um, as it was, she, she actually, she won the Inspirational Elders Award, uh, Elders category, outstanding. So I didn't have to make up a category. But what, 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 but what it did, it was able to show those in the room who, who was in, in their sort of mid sixties and thinking that I can't do this, is to say, look at these. These are, these are your, your peers and older and they can so by doing that i am my my aim now is to go back to the 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 the, the, the project in capturing those stories and getting that uh, so that can be a learning exhibition a dramatized piece around to show others um what 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 what, what gems our elders can share with us and how we can actually learn from that so yeah, so I'm sitting like, sitting here inspired by what you're saying and thinking, But this yeah, is this is, is why I brought you in. This is why I brought you in, Marcia, because don't you find that um what's happening with um a percent I put it this way, a percentage of young people, 
They don't seem to have a get up and go. A lot of them don't seem to, to feel as though they've got um, a future 10 years ahead. When we were in school, we had the careers officer and so on and so forth. And when we had a meeting, we were said, where do you see yourself in five years time? Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? And we always seem to have a vision. Younger people now don't seem to be able to have a vision more than a year or so ahead. And it's a quick, I want to be famous now. It's all this reality TV, it's all this now, now, now. And a lot of us as middle age people have more get up and go, stamina, strength, vision and focus than a lot of the younger children. But in 20 years time, we are going to be the 80 plus people and those younger generation are going to be the 40 somethings and to be holding us up. But if we don't allow them to have that vision and that ethos and that strength and that passion, where are we going to be mm. when it mm -hmm. matters? Yeah. So even though a lot of people say, oh, children's education, just leave them to it. We have to invest in our young people because by Absolutely. investing in our young people, we are investing in our future selves. Who is going to stand up? For us when people are not standing up for us now so like Marcia like Deanne with these partner money stories the elders award it's people like yourselves it's people like Carol that are bringing our generational cultural stories into life that are making people not think, oh, it's Mrs. So-and-so down the road. She's too stubborn. She this and she this and she that. Or she don't open her mouth. And like you're saying, Marcia, that a lot of our elders assume that we're supposed to know about certain things. Mm -hmm. We are not mind readers. We need to get them opened up. And whatever we digest, we need to divulge to the younger generation and in hope that they would divulge to theirs. So with this new stem that we have now, what are we going to do? I'm going to tell you to all unmute now. I want to open up the floor and I want to personally ask, what have you thought about the next five years. What do you think will happen? What is your hopes, aspirations, and what can you inject into your community that's going to help? I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to give each of you a minute and a half or so. Just what comes at the top of your mouth. Let it rip. Jennifer, please, thank you. I mean, within the next five years, I mean, so far it's been two years since this Bain family became about. And I'm hoping that in the next five years, we are gonna expand in terms of our knowledge and experiences. Um, I'm hoping to make a major difference, um, both politically and economically as well. Um, I just want us as, a, as the Bain community, the black community to basically, you know, keep our eyes open and do an action rather than speak it. So I just hope that we work together in a collaborative manner and the results in five years will actually, um, you'll, you'll see the difference in five years. So I'm hoping that we grow in terms of what we are doing today. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Anyone else? You see, this is no good. Well, you, you can't be, listen, I'm, I'm sorry people, right? But the silence of us is no good because when we're silent and then we say, oh, no, nobody, no, no, no. Thank Fiona, you, Fiona. Fiona wants to Go say ahead. something. Thank um, you. Fiona, what was it? <laughs> right. Um, 
It's interesting what you're saying about the five-year plan. Um, I work in a school as a cover supervisor. I am a qualified counsellor as, as, as well, but I've been working at a school for coming up to a year and a half, and it's a secondary school. Now, the school have plans, since the Black Lives Matter, they're, taken, they're proactively taken on board um, with BAME and trying to get um, dismantled the old um, history curriculum within the school. <laughs> Find it. So I'm wondering whether you guys will be able to come in and share your stories and probably collaborate with the school and sort of maybe have input in the school curriculum because you're so passionate about it. Um, so that's where I stand with it. Where I'm looking because the school has a five year plan. I, well, uh, as a cover supervisor, I want to help the kids' um, well-being. I want to help them sort of communicate in a different way instead of the way they're communicating. Now, how they communicate at home is a different environment at school and trying to get them to tap into their own resources. How do they learn? Because I, uh, I've, I've been aware everyone's got different teaching styles, but it doesn't it doesn't match up with the child's teaching styles. And I've actually seen the behavior and the interaction between pupils, between teachers and everything. But the school is now, um, it's come from really high up. They actually are focusing on the history and, and it's a multicultural school as well. Wonderful. Uh, um, so, so they are taking it on board. Good. Um, so Good. I'm, ex I'm excited to sort of be um, part yes. of it. Um, Good. They, Fiona, they, I'm going to stop you there. Do you oh, know how to link into the chats? Do you know okay. how to link into the chats? What chats? To go on, on, on the chat, on your screen, if you press into the chat and give us your details. Oh, right, right. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand what okay. you're saying. Secondly, are you a part of BAME? No, this is my sort of like first meeting. So you are a part of BAME from today. Put your, put your details in and we'll get you linked into BAME, okay? We'll, okay. We, need, we, need, we need you linked into BAME. You've got something going. You're a woman of substance. We need to know more about you. We need to inject with you. We need to follow it up. This is not a closure. Marcia. Okay. Uh, a couple of things. Fiona, I wanted to ask, are you, are you from Birmingham? No. This right. is why. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I'm really upset. I'm not from Birmingham. I'm going to let... Who else? Wait, can anyone ask no, 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 no. The only reason I was asking in regards to, to what you're doing in the schools, because, because my, my, um, my day job, I, I work for Birmingham City Council. Oh, and, okay. uh, and I'm also on the executive for the Black Workers Group. And one of the things that we have been doing is, uh, um, the, the, you know, we're, we're trying to exploit this Black Lives Matter movement because everyone now, um, um, our white colleagues are wanting to sh show that they're doing something. And yes, if this is what it school. takes, what we are saying, all right, we will use this platform and we're going to use it to the good. And one of the things that, that I have been, um, um, been pushing for is to get conversations going with the Department of Education to, to yes. get the Black History as a compulsory um, um, item on the curriculum um, so that it is across the board. So when you said that, I thought, oh my gosh, which school is that? What's going on? Yeah. But you know, um, it's just typical, it's not Birmingham. Um, but um, whatever, I will, I will connect with you. Am I breaking up? Yeah, yeah um, And for me, my quick, I'll just quickly be quick. For, for me, my five years is about really um, pushing the youths, making the youths um, being able to recognize their potential and to be the best they can. Mm -hmm. To have those positive role model, you bring in the elders, because for me, it's about the elders and the young people having that synergy so that the elders can, can start to respect that young people have something positive to bring and that the young people can know that they can learn from their elders. So I'm very passionate about getting those two together and that is, that is my, 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 my mission uh, which yeah. I'm working over right Jennifer years. thank you um, Fiona um, if you don't mind me asking where about
in Manchester. Sorry, okay, Manchester is a big place. No, um, it's okay. It's okay. It's worth brilliant. mentioning that BAME is a national organisation. Thank you. Right? Yes. It has to be. It's an international. We have got people Thank abroad you. as well. Yeah. Um, so membership is obviously throughout the West Midlands and beyond. Now, in terms of the school in which you teach at, um, anytime you need any of us yeah, to, be that's what I'm of. to attend, please yeah. book, book the, um, the date and the time and we'll get a few representations from the core, from the, from the steering group to attend your school and yeah, obviously lead on that okay thank you jennifer that's what it's thank all about you. collaboration thank over you. competition and this is a black issue okay and we need to while they are speaking we need to keep them speaking but also yeah. listening digesting and acting upon what we are saying deanne mm -hmm. I, I just love what everybody is saying because that is, you know, what Jennifer said before, you know, it's not just about talking it, because children, you can say something, but children will do what they see you do. So Thank it's you. action speaks louder than words. So business, really action, to... momentum, enterprise, <laughs> BAME, business, action, momentum, enterprise. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sisters, queens, empresses action because a child would listen for so long and if you don't bring forth what you're talking about they will go adrift consistency momentum action this is our bame fiona we're going to be in contact with you workshops are going to come we have got performers singers actors authors we've got all kind of entrepreneurial skills within bame if you put it forward, if you put a program forward, get your talking, get talking in your school, yeah. put the action forward, link up with us, become a member. We got you, sister. Yeah. Carry on, Deanne. Because I wanted to, I, I put it straight to the principal. Yes. That's, that's yes. where I go. I don't go to the deputy principal. I go straight Listen, to October is just round the corner. If it's exactly. not this October, it's the so next one. Yeah, but they're going to want to jump on the bandwagon in yeah. October because the society now is falling apart. They're going to want to bring the black on board to put the cement into the brick to yeah. build up the wall. Yeah. Come on, people. Let's have yeah. it. Deanne, carry on. This is your show. Yeah, I'm just saying, we, have, we have to make the changes ourselves. It's all yes. very well saying Black Lives Matter. But if you look back, how many times have we had process? We've had Martin Luther King. We've had, you know, Nelson Mandela. We've had all these people, loads of different people in America, uh, Rosa Parks. And then, yes, people have protested. Yeah, 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 we need to make changes. And like Sam Cook said, a change is, you know, it's, a change is going to come. But when? When? So for us, and I've noticed, you know, I love our men, but it's usually the women that come forward first and take that. It's always action. been a way. It's only now. It's always been a <laughs> so way. It is. Nothing new. <laughs> Maybe it's for us. And like I said, I speak to the elders and I say to them, you've got gold, which is going to die with you. Share it with your children and your grandchildren so they know who they are. And I go into school and I speak to the children and I say to them, go and speak to grandma. Go and speak to granddad. Poor grandma and granddad are at home, lonely, and have nobody to talk to. Whereas if they share, then yeah. the children are learning something. Grandma and granddad mm -hmm. can offload. But again, it's so difficult because our elders, you know, they've been taught to keep everything to their chest. Don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody your business. Cultural silences. Offload and just mm -hmm. talk. Can I move on to Carol Nelson? Carol Nelson, could you tell us what area you're in? Well, I'm a, I'm a children's book author and I've just written my first children's book, which was published last year. So like Fiona, I live in Manchester and that is my plan really to try and get more schools on board. Mm -hmm. But this so, is why I brought you in. I, knew, I know your book, I know of you and I know you're in Manchester. And this is the collaboration that I'm trying to bring in there. Fiona, Carol, Deanne, all Manchester based. We can get Manchester on the map doing these workshops. There's three of you here. There's three of you here right now. So yes, you know, I'm in the process. Happening. 
Yeah, I'm in the process of working with my local schools. So last October, I did a whole week. Yes. It was a school in sale, but to be quite honest with you, although it was predominantly white, they actually needed the information more than some of the, the black children, because I think the racism exists so prominently within these right schools. So they even teach it themselves. I hadn't met a black author. So if you imagine the novelty of being there, it was a large 600 primary school of children. And I did a whole week of workshop with them, introducing the characters and also linking it back so to some of our characters in this country that have gone on to do well. Because the book is to encourage children to dream big and to realize that they could be whoever they want to be because there is a prison to the pipeline for our children. So before I wrote the book and what I saw what was happening in America, that was one of the big in, um, stimulus for writing the book because it was quite traumatized. I thought, why, how are children must be seen, seen these are black men, you know, being tortured and murdered in such a horrific way. And I just thought that was not an image. I know that I, I, you know, it's not a good image for children to be having all of this flooded through social media. So by coincidence as well, the um, CPLE, which is Center for Learning for, for in Primary Education, they've done a research to say there's only 4% of black children that uh, of black authors that are really represented in children's books, something to that extent, you know. So when I was growing up, like, and like most of you here, I did not see myself visible in a children's no. book. No. It was, we had, so I then thought, right, I had this problem then, 40 years down the line, nothing's changed. So I'm going to start to write so that my, so that black children can see themselves in picture books. You know, that's where the value of the, and the importance comes in for them to be feeling valued and to be thought of of somebody. So that was how Dolly May came about. And then I brought it back to being growing up in the top of Mount Olive in Jamaica. <laughs> And um, part of my research went as far back as Egypt because of Mahat, you know, we had a lot of values and I felt a lot of that's gone. You know, we ourselves haven't sort of instilled these values within our children. So those values are not there, you know, self-respect, dignity, um, courage and all of those things really. So I bought, it was fiction and facts weaving together quite beautifully and the response has been really very good. So I've done, you know, a, local, you know, a few local schools, I've done communities and um, centres, lots of different exciting things have been happening around the book which I'm planning to expand this year. Two more books have been written just waiting good. for a publisher. Mm. But you know what I want to say? You know how people love our food. Mm. You go to carnival and what is the biggest queue of people mm. around the jerk chicken hut? Yes. Okay. They love mm -hmm. Bob Marley. All we need to do is get them on board with our full culture, not just the food and the music which you go anywhere, everybody know Bob Marley, you go anywhere they're talking about jerk chicken, you know, I mean, Jamie Oliver tried to come out with his own jerk <laughs> chicken and rice and peas. Don't I mean, they're all, jumping, they're all jumping on board and trying to mimic our culture. And that's okay. Because when people start to mimic you, it means they are interested in you. It doesn't really matter in which way they come in as long as they come in. And when we have hooked them, then we need to spill out the essence, the essence of our true culture, not the stereotypical culture that they make up or they pinch bits and then they multiply it and magnify some kind of, of illusion of our black culture, but the real essence of our black culture. And every single one of us today here now is definitely passionate about it. I can see that, I can feel it coming through the screen, right? I'm so happy that although it's Deanne's show here today and she has delivered wholeheartedly, we have a loop here with Deanne, Carol and Fiona, all from Manchester. You know, I have something in me that I believe that people that come together 
it's never ever just by chance mm -hmm. it, there is a, always a reason behind it so the fact that you have been given this platform today Deanne and you have now connected with Carol and Fiona who are in your area I can't tell you about this already. I'm Fiona. I'm not seeing Fiona for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know who was coming on today. All I know is you, Deanne, and Carol. That's all. And, and I love Carol's book. I bought a copy for my grandson, and he loves it. Because mm. I just think it, it's so colourful. It draws the children in. But they learn, you know, from every page. You read, yes. you learn something. This is, is what we want. We want people outside of our culture to embrace and eat up our culture like they nyam up the food and yeah. nyam up the music. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what we want. We want the same enthusiasm mm. for that as they've got for the music and food. Mm. Can we deliver? Yes, I think yes, that's we can. can. What did I say, Barack Obama? Thank you. Yes, we yes, have, that's we what can. I'm talking about. Because I think it's there's quite a universal thing that is happening at the moment. Where is this? There's this connection because we're all striving. I know we're all older, but if it is that the older people lead the movement, we're going to have to because I think we like you were saying genetic. There is this preservation for the younger children, the younger generation that. And not born in the Caribbean. I mean, yeah. I've already lost out because I weren't born into Africa. So, you know, we've already lost our rich cultural descendants or rich cultural heritage. A lot of that, you know, that loss that has been lost. And we are now wanting to preserve as much as we can for the next generation, you know. So we, we have to we have to fight some days i get tired because i'm drawn from pillar to post now with all sorts of things are happening but we've got to be energized and this is what's happening tonight there is a hedge in it and a positive energy coming through here and it's for us to come together and work together so that you know we leave that legacy behind for our children Definitely. And great grandchildren. on that on on that leaving legacy I would like to bring either Carol or Jennifer, whichever one of you, to bring across the, the um, essence of the Bain um, Business Action and Momentum Enterprise and why you think anyone that is here that is not a member should be a member and why. Okay, I'll, um, I'll start and then Carol, you can actually Thank uh, you. talk about the website and uh, some parts of the membership. Uh, BAME, Business Action Momentum Enterprise, that's a registered name, and uh, BAME is the acronym, which is Black, Asian, Minority and Ethnic. So we are an organisation that works with all the communities, but specifically our Black community, um, and we do have uh, associates from the other BAME communities. Uh, we have merchants from all communities. Now, the benefits of um, being part of BAME or being a BAME membership, not only do you get discounts, but you get first-hand information to what's going on within our community. Um, apart from the WhatsApp group, there's so many activities. I mean, it's, just, it's a shame about the lockdown because we do network events uh, in which we give platforms to people like yourself to promote your goods and services. We've expanded in so many different directions. We are now lobbying and campaigning local government in terms of changes. I mean, you know, the um, George Floyd situation, we want to be and we are at the forefront of change. Um, myself, um, I'm, a, I'm the chair of the Black Workers Group for Unison. So I'm trying to um, implement changes in that direction. Um, I do work with a team of people. So in collaborating with what I do for BAME and the Unison, um, just like Marcia, I also work for Birmingham City Council. So we do get first-hand information in terms of surveys or any new initiatives. So what I try to do is to bring all that together in one place and share that information. The membership is very crucial. I mean, it's only 50 pounds a year. Um, according to uh, the vice chair, is one pound forty a week, you know, and for that you get so many services from our organisation. Um, 
yeah, I can, I'll bring Carol in. Is there anything that I've missed out in terms of the business uh, website? No, you forgot to mention JD UK and your part. Yeah, yeah I do so many things. That sometimes I, I forget what I do, yeah. So I'm also part of the Jamaican Diaspora uh, UK. And again, um, they're doing quite a lot and we work very close um, in delivering some of their objectives as well. Um, my other role, I'm the International Relations Officer for Unison. So, you know, there's a, there's a few issues that's going on in, in Jamaica, and I use the word few, um, but there is a lot, you know. Um, so we're trying to identify ways of having uh, some kind of input um, and deciding, you know, what we could do in making a difference. So again, working in collaboration with all these other services, we aim to deliver a constructive service um, and hopefully see changes for the future. I mean, there's so many different areas of, of BAME. I mean, once you become a member, you can log into the website and you can actually see a lot that's what's going on there as well. Um, Thank you, in Jennifer. In actual Carol, fact, please. Thank in you. actual fact, you don't have to, you can just log into the website as you did to book onto okay. the event. So, yeah. you know, you've got um, a flavor and I manage the website. Um, my son and I created it. And, you know, as you saw, events are populated on there. And also, if you have something you want on the notice board as a member, just let us know and we will put it on the notice board so that you can get um, recognition. We have people jumping on to the website from the US from all over. I get notifications, site visitor from so-and-so, so-and-so. So it is definitely international that people are actually going onto the website and seeing what's on there. So all the membership details are featured on the website under membership. And you've also got an events page, you've got a gallery, so you can look at different events that we've run. There's some videos there and um, photographs and also, you name it, we try and put it on. So, you know, more and more different things are going on there. Mm. Um, right. um, yeah. I mean, well, can I bring, can I bring, sorry, sorry, Jennifer. Can yes. I bring in Yvonne Wright and let her just um, have a couple of minutes to say what she has benefited from joining BAME. Oh, hi. Um, hello, ladies. Can you hear me? I'm talking through her. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, apart from the amazing interaction and sisterhood that I've, I've, I've gained since joining. I joined in March or April, I think. Uh, my, my business has also benefited because members buy from me. And of course, I, I support other members, um, the businesses of other members. So the sisterhood, the membership, um, the, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> the, 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 the camaraderie, the, the chance to have a platform like this every Saturday. I look forward to this, um, this audience with whoever is, is on so we can learn about them and their businesses and whatever they're doing in the community. Um, I just want to say, I had a question for Diane. Is it okay to ask now? Yes, please. And then I have a comment. I think I'll do the, the comment first. It's, it's okay. Emancipation Day in Jamaica, 1st of August. Uh, we're celebrating Emancipation Day, Emancipation from Slavery. And I am, I'm horrified because yesterday the Supreme Court ruled that a little girl who was not admitted to a primary yes. school because she had locks. And they ruled that it's okay to discriminate against, against having locks. No, she didn't do it. She doesn't have locks for religious reasons. My locks are not for religious reasons. But they basically said it's okay for you to ban a child or prevent a child from coming to school with locks. I don't know if, if, if um, Jennifer's JD UK um, diaspora group can do anything where that is concerned. If we, have, if, if we can have a voice where that is concerned, parents said they are going to, um, are going to appeal mm. um, because they're saying cut your locks or you won't be allowed into our school, basically. And so is this it, in Jamaica? So is yes. this Yes, yesterday. I, I, saw, yes. I saw the news, I couldn't believe it. Jamaica, yes. all places. Yes. And you got to yes. you can't move with locks. Yes. 
can I just say there is a committee um, of um, you know people from Jamaica and we're trying to identify the cause in terms of what we could get involved in so if you're happy to be part yes. of that committee, I will contact yes. you and then you know we're working with the Jamaican High Commissioner as well and you know we're open to see changes from there so I'll contact you and you can be part of that committee as well that's okay. wonderful now you see people this is what i'm talking about this is bain you know there's a there's a lot of groups that are out there on on facebook and and and, and whatsapps and so on and so forth and they go so far bain is one of the ones that that would interweave and are willing to spread and grow as you spread and grow and take on board from every angle what you've got to offer and what they can deliver. Now, as far as Yv Yvonne was saying there now, that she has benefited from the, the camaraderie, the sisterhood, the brotherhood that BAME has got, and I say it again, business action, momentum enterprise. If you join for that 50 pounds a year, there's 52 weeks in a year, so it's just over a pound a week, okay, um, to get the benefits of this. Number one, you can get a platform like this where you get a group of people that you are the, the, the prime um, focus and you can tell everyone about what you've got to offer and where you want to go with your business or your products. Secondly, you get the camaraderie, you get the grouping, you get contacts, you get knowledge, you get all sorts of things added within that. Within the weeks on WhatsApp, we have Market Monday, where you can um, put your links up, your products up. When you join and you are a member for a few months, you can get 10% um, or some more, depending what the product is, on the different products that the members are selling or endorsing or encouraging you to have, events and so on and so forth. You are supported. There's not a lot of that going on around there with black people uniting and giving things away for less, for less giving you a percentage off you don't get that okay this is fame this is my village and i want it to grow in birmingham in manchester milton Keynes, leicester london edinburgh i want it to spread i want the black wall street of the 30s i want it to grow i want us to be the cement that builds the bricks i want us to grow my middle-aged self does not want to see my pension self saying you did have something to say, you know, and you never say it. No <laughs> point saying it. No, the time gone. There's nothing you can do. I'm saying it now while I'm strong, while I'm still young. I'm saying it now. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, okay. can I ask Let's a question? No. no, sorry. <laughs> if I don't have, have an next question, if no, I ask no, a question I yet. Exactly. Um, <laughs> um, Diane, um, you, you write fantasy, basically fantasy. Um, not a lot of black people read fantasy. Um, my husband is a big fantasy reader. He, he's read all of Wheel of Time. I don't know if you've read Wheel of Time. But how do you market to people who they say don't read? And one, and, and two, to black people and market to women how do you get them to read your fantasy well oh. funnily enough the oh. title of the my original short stories the title used to drink, brings people in you know partner money stories as soon as people see that it's like, oh partner i used to be in a partner my mom and my dad we used to be in a partner so what's it about so as soon as i tell them they buy it and almost everybody that buys volume one comes back and buys volume two because they say they love it. And it's not true that black people don't read. Right. We do. But uh, what's happening now, though, a lot of people are not reading books. They're reading from Kindle and downloading stuff. And although my short stories are on Kindle and you can get a Kindle version of my Mandari Chronicles from um, Amazon, 
um, you, I haven't got a Kindle version yet on my website. And as the people know who've written, unless you sell the books yourself, you only get a tiny fraction, if anything, if it's sold by Amazon and anybody else. So this is why I say to people, you know, please go and buy the books from my website. You will get signed copies from my website. So I'm um, sorry, is it Yvonne? I can't remember the year name. Yeah, yeah, I find, yes, people do read. Mm. But I've also got audio versions of my short stories, which a lot of people buy for their elders because they said they love listening to me reading my stories because they just laugh their heads off when I put on the Jamaican accent. So yes. that really is how I advertise yes. it. That's hard now. You know, stories from when you were a child. If you want to remember those, take a little walk down memory lane by Parliament yeah. Stories. And right, people. So Deanne, Yvonne, Marcia, Carol, Jennifer, Andrea Williams. We didn't hear from you, Andrea. You never raise your hand or nothing. So I'm just hoping that your belly is full. <laughs> because if your belly is full, then I'm happy. Fiona, thank you very much. Everyone, it is now 7.30. I am prompt on everything. Professionalism is what I'm all about. It has been a banquet. I have enjoyed myself. Elizabeth, thank you very much for joining us. I didn't quite see you. I didn't swipe my screen. Anybody else that is with us? Thank um, you very much for joining. Just this very quickly. Bird, passing you on to Carol. She wants to come in there and steal me, yes. steal me no. last night. Second. No, because you haven't told anybody what you do. Now, this is a for yourself. Well, that's what I was waiting for you to say something about me. Oh, I don't blow my own trumpet. You, <laughs> you should. Okay, Jeanette. People. Right. Over Before to you. Before we wrap it all up, as Carol is saying, right, I'm just going to blow my last few notes now. <laughs> okay. I'm Jeanette Barrett, a.k.a. Miss Lyricist B., I'm a performance poet, an author, an actor, a writer, a singer, a dancer, a choreographer, and a mime artist. You probably have realized from my passion and my gesticulation and my voice projection that I am a performance person and I am definitely a member of BAME, as you may have guessed, <laughs> okay? And I am part of the steering group and I have been for a couple of years now. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I am an author of four uh, published um, things at the moment, um, books and collaborations, and there are four more coming out before the end of the year. And I am a black cover girl of a Motivate magazine, international wow. magazine. And it's beautiful, you know? I saw the pictures. Yes, and what I did was done the, the, the wrap and the red, gold and green just in time for Emancipation Day and the independence of a Jamaica. I'm bringing it large and loud for us black people. And yes, I went on similar to this, even though I was told that, you know, you know if I could, no, no, I went on authentic, like I always am. And I would not be swayed any shape or form. I came as the real me yeah. and they put it on there as the real me. Otherwise it would have been a no-go. Mm. So this is it. Keeping it real, being authentic, telling ourselves, our stories, our culture, and letting people know the trueness of us and not the stereotypical watered down conformity. People, thank you very much. It is yeah, thank great. You. Thank all of you Peace for joining. Love thank and you. light to mm. all of you. If any of you is on the Muslim side and you're celebrating Eid, then salam alaikum. I will say sastriga, namaste, peace, love, and light. Nakauna, I see you. Big up yourselves. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Well done, Diane. Well done, well done, Diane. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. This is what we need. Yeah. Remember my website, all the W's, Pardner Money Stories, P A R D N E R, moneystories.co.uk. And go buy a, buy a signed copy of one of my books. I've and got a signed copy. copy. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody wants to keep, if anybody wants to save the chat, um you're able to do that there's some contact details within the chat um if you click on the chat and you see 
an option to file, click on it, it will save it onto your computer or device. Okay, thank you. Deanne, Deanne, could I ask you to put, put your email in the, in the chat because I, I didn't get it all down. Okay, I will. And Fiona, how do you Fiona's is in there. Fiona's email address is in there. Fiona Scotland. I've got yes, I got Fiona's. Yeah. Is it Welcome Pardoner Fiona. Money Stories? Your website. Yeah, Pardoner. I, I'm not very good technically, so I seem to have lost something here. It's all the W. Okay. W dot Pardonermoneystories.co.uk. Right, I'll put that in the chat. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Jodie. Okay, lovely everybody. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Right. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy your Sunday dinner tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Right. Carol, um, did, did you say that you're going to save the chat and send it? So, mind you, I think I've got both contacts now anyway. So, yeah, I should be all right. Yeah. And oh, Fiona, I will email you, okay? Okay, then. Okay, yeah, no, no problem. problem. Lovely meeting you, ladies. Likewise for everybody. Yeah. Okay, bye, ladies. Bye. 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 Fiona, can bye. I have Oh, she's gone. Okay. Can I have okay. Who did you want, Carol? Fiona's email, um, please. I've got it, I've got it. Okay, nice. Right. Okay. I'll stop the recording now. Okay.